Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Gurudev. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Timpani. Timpani. Mama Kai Kaisha Ime. Okay,开始了,他不宁说一下开场白好吗?谢谢。就由姑姑直接开始就可以。姑姑,我们可以开始了。Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesya Sunyavadi Paschatya Desatarine Vanchaka upata rubyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam pavanebhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're going through the second canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 1, or chapter 2 rather, and we're hearing how Ajamil was delivered by the Vishnu Dutas. So after Ajamil was saved from going to Yamaraj, because the Vishnu Dudas had come, he was very, he was very grateful to the Vishnu Dutas. And he understood, Ajamil could understand that the reason why he was saved from going to Yamaraj was because he chanted the holy name. And he chanted the holy name in the association of devotees. And this way his heart was becoming purified. So he promised to himself, he said, I'm not going to be a victim again to material sense gratification. I'm finished with material sense gratification. He said, now, <coughs> he said, now, <coughs> He said, now I'm going to fix my mind on, on the lotus feet of Krishna. He said, I'm going to stop thinking about what is mine and what, who I am. I'm going to give up that idea of I am this body and this is mine. So this is the big problem. This is why we get lost in material life. The beginning is when we identify with the body. We think, I am the body. And that's why in the Bhagavad Gita, the first thing Lord Krishna teaches Arjuna is that we're not the body. But to understand this knowledge, to understand but not the body, we have to chant the holy name. And we have to keep ourselves in the association of devotees also. So chanting the holy name 
will help to keep us away from material contamination. Right. We get we easily fall into Maya and we get many bad habits. We eat impure food, meat, fish and eggs. We take all kinds of intoxication, get alcohol and cigarettes and tea and coffee. And then we like to go gambling. And there's, there's always a chance that we'll be attracted to illicit sex. So we have to be very careful to control the mind and the senses. First thing is to get so the first thing, the first step in getting rid of getting away from all these things is to understand that we're not the body. So Ajameo understood that because of his association with the Vishnu Duras. He had become detached from material life. He was no longer thinking about his family and his prostitute wife. Instead, he decided he's going to leave home. He left home and he went to he went to Hardwar. Hardwar Har Haridwara. The name is actually from Haridwara. Hardwar became Hardwar, but actually the meaning is the Dwara is the door and Hari the, it's the gate into Hari to Lord, Lord Hari's abode. Mm. We want to transcend to get out of the material world. Then sometimes the yogis and great souls they'll go into the Himalayas, they go to the mountains. So Ajamil didn't care about his he forgot about his wife and children, he just went to the mountains. He went to, to Hardwar because he knew it's a holy place and he'd be, be able to make advancement in the holy place. So the very culture is that as we get older, people should want to retire from material life. It doesn't matter if they're devotees or not. Anybody can go to these places, the holy places. And they, can, they, have, they just have to be determined to give up that bodily conception. So many people, they'll go there to spend the rest of their life. They'll plan to leave the body in the holy place.
they come to the holy place and they would just simply stay there and chant the holy name and take Krishna Prasada. There are many temples like that that will give simple food, some kichari prasadam to the sadhus, to the people who are living there in the holy place. And they even have places for old ladies to go and stay. You see in Vrindavan, they have there these ashrams for the widows, old ladies, they come there and live there to just to leave the body. And because they understand if they can leave their body in the holy place, will help them to go back to Godhead. So Prabhupada said, we don't have any center in Hardwar, but he said, Mayapur and Vrindavan, they're better than Hardwar. And devotees are more connected to, Vrind to Vrindavan and Mayapur than they are to Hardwar. Hardwar is more for the, the, the Mayavadis and the, the yogis. And Prabhupada especially writes about the Mayapur temple, he said anybody can go there and take advantage of the association of devotees. So, unfortunately people, in, nowadays people in their old age, they get like Dhritarashtra, they don't want to leave the home, they just become attached to the home. If Vidura had not come back to Hastinapur, then Dhritarashtra would have just stayed in the, in the palace, he would just stay with, with the Pandavas and left the body. But Vidura came and preached to him and got him to leave the house. So in Hardwar, Antimil came, he came up to Hardwar, he also, he was able to get a place, get to stay in a Vishnu temple. And he was staying there doing bhakti yoga. He controlled his mind and senses and he engaged in devotional service. And so in the same way we have our Krishna consciousness movement around the world, people can come and live in the Krishna conscious centers and they can also engage in devotional service. Of course, it's not that we just offer a free place for people to come and eat and sleep. They have to come, they have, if they come to stay in our center, they have to follow the regulated principles and they have to work, they have to do service. Mm, they, have to, they have to practice the regulated principles of bhakti yoga. So we can learn from the life of Ajameo, how Ajameo did. We can learn from Ajameo's life, how Ajameo did. 
So we should be determined, we have to be determined, we have to be very convinced that this is the right thing to do. So Ajamila, he, he of, of course, he had first hand, ex he was able to see directly the Vishnu Dutas and the Yama Dutas, so he was very serious. He knew if he didn't, if he went back into Maya, he would certainly be taken by the Yamaduras to hell. So he was very, very careful not to get into Maya again. So he kept himself always engaged in devotional service. And he didn't allow his mind to even think about sense gratification. Instead, his, he, he was always thinking about the form of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Right. He was and he was worshiping, he was seeing the deity in the temple, he was thinking about the form of the Lord, the deity. So worshiping the deity is not different from directly seeing the Lord. The deity is also an incarnation of the Lord. So worshiping the deity, this is a type of bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga, they say bhakti yoga is the most easy of all the, all the yoga systems. Some yogis, they try to con concentrate the mind on the super soul within the heart, Vishnu. But it's much easier to think of the deity. When we see the form of the deity with our own eyes, then we can think of that form. But to try to think of the super soul in the heart, that's the mind wanders, sometimes we think, then the mind wanders, and it's difficult to keep the mind fixed on the form of the super soul. But when we see the deity, then we can think, we can concentrate our mind, keep the mind focused on the deity. Like, just like sometimes we see the deity worship, we see the, the, we see the devotee offering arti, and sometimes we see them also offering the food, and this way we can think about the different activities of the Lord. So just by seeing the deity, you can become the very best yogi. And Krishna also says the same in the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, Yogi nama pisarvisham madgate nantaratmanam Shradavam bhajate yomam same yuta tamomata. That the highest yogis is the one who is always thinking of me and worshipping me. So he is he's intimately united with Krishna in yoga. He's the best of all yogis. 
，这样的瑜伽师就是通过瑜伽与我最紧密的联系在一起，他也是最高级的瑜伽师。So the yogi, that this the bhakti yogi is he, the first class yogi, he has no interest for material activities. He's only thinking of the form of the Lord. 一流的瑜伽师对这些物质感官、物质活动根本没有兴趣，他的心只是想着做。So when Ajamil Ajamil purified his heart and then his mind and his intelligence were fixed on the form of Krishna, the form of the deity. 当阿加米勒把他的心智固定在至尊主的形象上时 ，So then again. Ajamila could see he could see the four the the four people from Vaikuntha the four Vishnu Dudas came again. And so he bowed down to them. He offered his obeisances to them. He had seen them before, so he could recognize them. 因为他，因为阿加米勒以前看过他们，所以他认识他们。So the Vishnu Dudas they came because they they knew that now Ajamil was purified his mind. Vishnu Duta 这个时候来了，是因为 Vishnu Vishnu Duta 知道阿加米勒这个时候的内心已经获得了净化。And now he's thinking of the form of the Lord in his mind. So they came back to see Ajamil. 这个时候，他内心可以想着主，所以他来看一看，他来看一看阿加米勒。They left him to give him time to fix his mind in meditation. 维什奴都他当时离开是想给阿加米勒一个机会，让他们能够把心意专注于至尊主。So this time they came there, and their idea is they want to take a j a m i l a with them. 这一次维什奴都他来，他们是想把阿加米勒给带回去了。So Ajamila, he's not afraid of them. He's happy. He he likes these Vishnu Duras. He offers his obeisances to them. Ajamila, 并不害怕他们，而且他非常喜欢他们。So Ajamila went. He went to the bank of the Ganges and he gave up his body, and he went with the Vishnu Duras. Ajamila 去到恒河岸边，放弃了他的躯体，之后就跟维什奴都他他们走。He got a spiritual body. He got a spiritual body. And he went with the Vishnu Dudas to become an associate of the Supreme Lord. He went with Vishnu Dudas to become an associate of the Supreme Lord. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, when we understand Krishna's birth and activities to be transcendental, then we never take birth again in this world. So Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, 第四章说，呃，如果有谁能了解我显现和活动的超然本性，在离开躯体后，就再也不会投身这个物质世界。When we give up the material body, then we immediately go to the spiritual world. 当我们离开躯体之后，我们会立刻回到灵性的世界。You get a spiritual body to become an associate of the Supreme Lord. Some devotees will go to Vaikuntha, and some will go to Goloka. If you go to Vaikuntha, then you get the forearm form, and you'll be with Lord Vishnu. And if you go to Goloka, then you become an associate of Krishna, and you become maybe a cowherd boy or a cowherd girl or something. 如果我们去到外昆塔的话，我们会得到一个四臂的形体，和主为什么在一起？如果我们去到格罗卡的话，我们有可能会成为一个木牛童或者木牛姑娘，和主为什么在一起 ？So Ajamila went with the with these Vishnu Dutas. They they went together. They took, went in an airplane made of gold. Ajamila 和这些为什么都塔是和金色。金子制成的这个飞机一起回回去的。And and it, they went directly to the abode, to the the place of Lord Vishnu, the husband of the goddess of fortune. 他直接去到主威士奴的居所，也就是幸运女神丈夫的居所。So 
They went straight into the spiritual world to be with the Supreme Lord, Vishnu or Narayan. We see in the material world, we see material scientists, they try to go to the moon, but they're not able to go there really. But spiritual airplanes come from the spiritual planets and they can take people back to Godhead. And these planes go so fast that they can go back, you can go back to Godhead in a second. So we have to understand these airplanes are not material, they're spiritual. So difficult for us to imagine how fast they travel. We know how fast the mind can travel. The mind can, when we think of one place, we may think of America very far away, immediately the mind can be there. But the spirit is finer than the mind, it can go faster than the mind. Doesn't even take a second for the spirit soul to go there. So when the pure devotee is ready to give up the body, he can immediately go back to Godhead. Just like Pankajangari Prabhu, he was, he was saying, I think I'll go back to God, I think I'll go to Goloka Vrindavan. So Krishna took him, Krishna arranged for him to go to Goloka Vrindavan. Because he was always thinking of Krishna, he was always thinking how to serve Krishna. So Ajamila, he had been born a Brahmana, he was born in a good family, but he had become degraded. But he became degraded. But he took bad association and he lost all of his Brahminical qualities. He didn't keep any religious principles. He became very fallen and he would, he would do things like steal and drink alcohol. And he was living with a woman who was a prostitute. So he was supposed to be taken to hell by the servants of Yamaraj. But because he was chanting the holy name Narayan, and he wasn't even chanting the pure name, it was just a shadow of the name. He was saved. So we we should we should learn from this how powerful it is if you chant the holy name. Anybody who wants to get free from material life, they have to chant the holy name. 
They need to hear about the name, the fame, the form, pastimes of the Lord. And all the holy places are connected with the lotus feet of the Lord. And people may do other processes, they may do things like pious activities. They may speculate, try to understand scriptures by their mind. Or they may do meditation and mystic yoga. But still they will not be able to control the mind. Because they've still got the qualities of passion and ignorance. The modes of nature are very powerful, very difficult to, over, to overcome the modes of nature. And without Krishna consciousness, you can't do it. So even though somebody may be a great materialist, he may have achieved great success in his material life, but he just becomes attached to material activities. Somebody may be a big jnani, may have so much knowledge, he speculates and he understands so much knowledge and he writes so many books and he's regarded as being a very great man, but still his activities are just material, mundane. Somebody may be a yogi, he may be meditating on the super soul, but he still may be attached to material activities. Just like sometimes some yogis and sannyasis, they renounce the material world. They say this world is all maya, it's all false. So we... But after some time, then they come back to do welfare activities material activities. They open a hospital or they open a school for the children. So that's very nice, but it's not spiritual. So these people had renounced the material world, but they're coming back to take up more material activities. They, they say, no, I'm doing this for the benefit of the people. But that's only for their material benefit. It's not going to benefit them spiritually. It's not going to get them free of birth and death. So without being devotees, they don't know how to engage in spiritual activities. Mm. 
And sometimes the bit these these swamis and yogis sometimes they get involved in politics. They may say they are sannyasis, they may say they have renounced the world, but why are they getting involved in politics? Politics is just material business, it's material activity, it's for people in the bodily concept of life. So, if somebody is really understood the nature of the material world, they won't want to get involved in these things. So, the proper understanding is that if somebody actually wants to get out of the material world, he has to do bhakti yoga. And bhakti yoga begins with Shravanam Kirtan Vishnu, hearing and chanting about Vishnu. Vishnu or Krishna is the same. Vishnu and Krishna are the same. So, when, we, when Prabhupada began the Krishna consciousness movement, he saw many young people were coming to Krishna consciousness and some of them had bad habits, like some were even taking drugs. And they couldn't give up the drugs. They were having great difficulty to give up the drugs. But once they became devotees, they got attached to chanting and they could give up their drug addiction. So this is the power of chant, and this is the power of Krishna consciousness that it takes away all these bad habits. We're, before we become Krishna conscious, we're very much in we're very much involved in the mode of passion and ignorance. But Krishna consciousness helps us to get free of that passion and ignorance. Brings us up to the mode of goodness. The mode of passion and ignorance just makes us greedy and lusty. But when we do chanting and hearing about Vishnu and Krishna, then we come to the mode of goodness and we become happy. And because he's engaging in devotional service, all his material desires are forgotten and lost. So he, uh, any doubts which he may have had, they're all removed by the power of devotional service. So Krishna consciousness is so powerful. Krishna so this story about Ajamila is a very, it's a very confidential story. It's it's actually confidential. Not everybody knows, but but hearing about Ajamil is very powerful. 
阿加米勒的这段故事是实实际上也很机密，并不是所有人都知道。And just by hearing about Ajamil, about what happened to him, it helps us to get rid of all our sinful reactions from the past. And so, if we, if we hear about these pastimes like Ajamil, we have to hear with faith and devotion. 当我们聆听阿加米勒这个校园时光的时候，我们应该怀着信心和奉爱。And this will save us from hellish life. 这能够帮助我们免除去到地狱的状况之中。It doesn't matter how sinful we've been before; it can save us. 不管我们以前有多么的罪恶，这都会拯救。So it said, the Yamaduras, these servants of Yamaraj, they will never come to a devotee. When, because they've, they've been chanting the holy name, because they've been doing devotional service, so the Yamaduras will never disturb such a person. And when he goes back to Godhead, the people in the spiritual world will receive him very nicely and take care of him and worship him. When such a devotee returns to the Lord, the people will be very pleased to receive him. They're happy to see the. When we go back to Godhead, they say, "Hey, where have you been? We didn't see you for a while." When we go back to Godhead, people will say, "Where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while." Because when we go back to Godhead, people will say, "Where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while." Because when we go back to Godhead, people will say, "Where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while." Because when we go back to Godhead, people will say, "Where have you been? We haven't seen you for a while." Because when we go back to Godhead, people will say, "Where have you been?" Right, one moment, one one moment of Brahma's time was one year on this planet. Brahma 的一个瞬间就是这个，就是我们这里的一天一天一年。But one moment in the spiritual world, you cannot imagine how long it is in this material world. 因此，在灵性世界的一个瞬间，我们可以想一想，在我们这个物质世界是有多么的长。Actually, there is no time in the spiritual world. But there is an impression of time. So Ajamila, because he was suffering at the time of death, he was he chanted the holy name of Lord Narayan. Because Ajamila in his death, he chanted the holy name of Narayan. And although he was his chanting was towards his, he was chanting the name of his son, but it saved him from going to hell, and it helped him to go back home, back to Godhead. So if we also chant without offenses and faithfully, then. We will also get the chance to go back to Godhead. So, at definitely, at the time of death, it's difficult to control the mind. Right, the bodily functions are not working properly. Our body's functions are also very weak. The organs are all failing. The organs, sorry, the body, body organs of the body break down. Our, 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 oh, all the things are falling. Organs, ganglia, no, 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 ganglia, senses, uh, oh. organs, uh, organs like the liver, the kidney, the lungs, 
different thing, the different, different parts of the body at the time of death, they don't work properly. So even somebody may have, throughout his life, he practiced chanting the holy name, but at the time of death, he may not be able to chant very clearly. But, but we can be sure that because he's been chanting throughout his life, that he will get all the benefits of chanting, even though at the time of death he was not able to chant so well. So when the body is okay, when the body is fit and healthy, then we have to chant the holy name. We have to chant it loudly, clearly. And, and then, if we, if we do that, then at the time of death, we'll be able to chant the holy name with faith and love. Krishna will arrange. Krishna will arrange. So when, if we chant the holy name constantly, we're guaranteed to go back to Godhead, without a doubt. So there's a little more here uh, in relation to uh, one of the Acharyas. He describes a conversation which took place between uh, oh well, between devotees. Because people may wonder, how can we get free from all the sinful reactions simply by chanting the holy name? So somebody may say, well, I, okay, chanting the holy name, we can get freed from the reactions of sinful life. But if we commit the sins knowingly, with, you know, full consciousness, we, deliberately, we know, we know that we're doing something sinful. And if we do them, not once, but many times, then he won't get he won't be able to get free from the reactions. He may try to do atonements, he may try to make up for the sinful activities for even twelve years or more. But he won't, he won't get free. So we will, we want, the question is, how can we understand that simply by once chanting the holy name, we can immediately get freed from sinful reactions? So the Acharyas quote the verse in, the, in this chapter which says that the chanting of the holy name of Vishnu is the best way to make up for all sinful activities. It doesn't, even if you, if you stole gold, or if you were a drunkard, or you killed a brahmana, 
即便你偷了金子，或者是一个酗酒者，或者说是一个杀了婆罗门的人。Or maybe you had illicit sex with the wife of the guru. Or some other superior, the wife of another superior. Or other Chanting the holy name is the best way to make up for somebody who kills a king. 唱诵主的圣名是最好的方法，甚至即便对那个杀死了国王的人来说。The king is the representative of God on earth. 这个国王代表了是在地球上的主。And if somebody murders women, that's also considered very sinful. But chanting the holy name can also save you. 比如说，一个人杀了女人，这也被认为是很罪恶、很罪恶的。但是，唱诵主的圣名也能拯救你。Or if you kill your own father, it's very sinful, but chanting the holy name can save you. 或者你杀了你的父亲，但是唱诵主的圣名也能帮你赎罪。And if you kill cows, it's also very sinful, but chanting the holy name can save us. 比如说，杀了乳牛也是非常罪恶的，但是唱诵主的圣名也可以拯救我。Because when we chant the holy name, it attracts the attention of the supreme Lord. 因为我们唱诵了主的圣名，就可以吸吸引主的注意力。And the supreme Lord thinks this man has chanted my name, so I I have to give him protection. 主就会想。这个人唱诵我的名字，我就有责任，我就得保护他。嗯。So to get rid of sinful reactions, one may try to do some atonements. 一个人想免除罪恶的反应，或许他会做一些赎罪、苦行、赎罪的方式。So ordinary atonements, they can give protection for some a little while. 通常普通的这种忏悔或或赎罪方式能够免除他一点点。But it doesn't take away the desire for more sinful activities. 但是它不能根除一个人内心想要从事罪恶活动的欲望。The desire for sin is still there, and after some time, then they'll do more sin. 内心想要从事罪恶的欲望还在那里，等一段时间之后。But the chanting of the holy name is not like that. 但是唱诵主的圣名不是那样的。Chanting of the holy name will take away the desire for all sinful activities. 唱诵主的圣名能够带走一个人内心想要从事罪恶活动的欲望。So if a person even they only once chant the holy name, but if they fully surrender to the Lord. Then they get protection. 因此，一个人只要一次唱诵主的圣名，而且完全投靠主的莲花族，主就会保护他。So when Ajimila was in great danger, when the Yamaduras came before him, then the Lord sent his servants, the Vishnu Duras, to protect him. 所以，当阿迦弥勒处于巨大的危险之中的时候，主就保，主就派他的使者。And because Ajamil was free from all sinful reactions, the Vishnu Dudas protected him. So Ajamil loved his son. He loved his son very much, and he gave him the name Narayan, and he would always call his name. Ajamil very much loved his son. He loved his son very much. 他给了他儿子的名字拿尔扬纳，他总是唱诵他儿子，也唱诵这个拿尔扬纳的名字。So the name itself was powerful because it's the name of the Lord. It's not different from the Lord. 这个名字的本身是非常有力量的，名主的名字和他本人是没有区别，非常有力量。So when Ajimila gave his son the name Narayan, he got free of all the reactions of his sinful life. 当阿加米勒给他的儿子命名为拿尔扬纳的时候，他所有的恶报都已经被抵消
And he, of course, he kept calling the name of his son, he was always chanting the name many, many thousands of times. And so in this way, he was advancing in Krishna consciousness. So somebody may say, well, he was chanting the holy name of Narayan, but he was still associating with a prostitute and he was still drinking wine. So his sinful reactions would bring him suffering, more and more suffering. So we may say it must have been the, the last chanting of Narayan that helped him to get free. But if we say like that, then his chanting would have been Nama Parad. That would have not been pure chanting. Right. Somebody chants to get freed from their sins, then that's Nama Parad. So Ajamila's chanting was never offensive. He didn't chant the holy name of the Lord just to counteract his sins. He knew he was addicted to sinful activities. Oh no, I'm sorry, he didn't know. He didn't know that he... Oh. <laughs> huh. he was so ignorant, he was so lost in illusion, he didn't know that what he was doing, he didn't understand he was doing sinful things. And he didn't know that chanting the name of Narayan was going to take away his sins. So his chanting was not offensive. But actually, because he was calling the name of his son, because he was calling the holy name of Narayan, which was his son, that is like pure chanting. So Ajamila got the benefit of doing bhakti. So even the very first time he chanted the holy name, that was sufficient to destroy all of his sinful reactions. And then the, we, we're given an example. Just like there may be a, a fig tree. A fig tree doesn't immediately give fruits. But after time, you have to give it time, after some time, then the fruits come on the tree. So Ajamila's service, his devotion, his bhakti, it grew a little bit, a little bit, gradually it was growing, but he didn't know it. And although he was doing sinful activities, the reactions didn't affect him. Yeah, in the scriptures it said, if you chant 
if one chants the holy name just once, if one chants the holy name of the Lord just once, the reactions of our past and present and future will not affect us. And then another example, if you take out the poison fangs of a snake, they may have big, they have poison fang, so they can cut out the fangs. So even the snake bites, nobody will get affected. So the same way, if a devotee chants the holy name even once, without offense, this protects the devotee eternally. But he has to wait for the results of the chanting to come. Okay, so we'll stop here today. Any questions? Yes. Uh, the servant mood? How to have the servant mood? Yes. You have to want to do service. Give up the idea of being the master. Become, and become the servant. Think, how can I serve you? So, there, the mood of a servant. The mood, just think, what is the mood of the servant? So Krishna is the master, we are the servant. We should be thinking, how can I serve Krishna? And we should think how to please Krishna. So we can please Krishna by pleasing his devotees. Sometimes we have to be the servant of the devotees also. Serving the devotees is as good as serving Krishna. They say worshipping Vishnu is the best type of worship. But even better than worshipping Vishnu is worshipping things in relation to Vishnu. So, thinking about being the servant of the devotees, think how to serve the devotees. We think, how can I serve the devotees? We can just do it, like you serve prasadam. And you know, and tell the devotees, please sit down and, and bring them prasadam, bring them a glass of water. Receiving people, being nice to them, speaking nice words to them. This is also a very nice way to please people. We have, we have then she then she uh then she asked uh what are the five uh liberation? Oh, five five kind of five kind of 
the information? Well, five tenths of liberation. One is to become one with the Lord. That is for the impersonalist, not for the devotees. Mm. Another kind of liberation is to live on the same planet with the Lord. And another is to be a companion with the Lord. And another is to have the same bodily features as the Lord. Or the fourth one, fifth one is to have the same opulences as the Lord. Devotees are not very anxious to get these things because devotees are already liberated souls. They use their body, mind, and words in the service of Krishna. So a devotee is not worried about any material, he doesn't have any material desires. He, he just wants devotional service. Lord Chaitanya in his Shikshastika prayer prays, I don't na danam na janam na sundarim kavitam va jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmanishwari bhavatad bhakti ahaitaki tvai. That I don't want wealth and I don't want followers and I don't want to enjoy the opposite sex. I just want devotional service, birth after birth. So Lord Chaitanya teaches us that we're not anxious to get liberation. But if Krishna gives it, we can we may take it. But devotees already liberated in this life by doing devotional service. Okay. Okay. Next question from Vidavati Mataji. Dimbai Gurdeka and Fai. For example, I like to this this spiritual master's lecture, but I don't like the other spiritual spiritual master's lecture. Uh, if this kind of um, uh, like or dislike is uh, Sense gratification? Well, it's not very good if you have that mood. But everybody has their like, everybody has their preferences, who they like to hear from. We don't force people that you have to hear this person, you can't hear. We don't say, no, you have to hear. But, if, you know, it's up to you who you hear. You have free will. Woman, mm. uh, Woman,每一个人都有自由意志。但是呢,这种心态是不好的。比如说,你有这种心态喜欢或者不喜欢,这个心态是不好的。但是我们都有自由意志,我们并不强迫你去听这个女性导师,而不要去听那个女性导师。
Hare Krishna. Obeisance to Guru uh, and all the devotees. When we go back to the spiritual world, uh, can we still remember when we when we do the devotional service, all all the um, devotees and uh, our relationship, this kind of relationship and uh, harmony relationship can uh, can still have in the in the in the spiritual world. Can we still remember this this relationship? Not likely, because just like you have dream at night, do we remember all the dreams we had at night? We don't remember. So we've had so many lives in this world, we don't remember all of our lives, we don't remember previous lives. How, how will we remember when we go back to Godhead? How can we ever rem No, we won't remember anything. Um, this Malaji may ask, can we remember the devotional, uh, can we remember this devotional relationship and uh, love with each other? Well, the devotion, the, the attitude, the love for Krishna, that will keep with us. But the love for the devotees, the love for different devotees and so on, that's not going to be likely. I don't think that will be remembered. Our relationship is with Krishna. And the devotees' relationships are meant to help us to cultivate our love for Krishna. Our, we have this eternal love for Krishna. So that, that we, we spend only a little time together here in the material world. We don't remember much about what we've been doing here. So that time will be forgotten. Because the love for Krishna is so great. And the reason why we love devotees is because they are also connected to Krishna. Next question also from Chandra Vinasi. Uh, Malaji,请教侮辱,您讲到唱颂圣名可以拯救非常非常罪恶的人。那我们自己唱颂圣名,怎么才知道我们自己的罪恶夜报在消退呢?消退呢?同时感受到唤醒对Krishna的爱。我
，你通过你对罪恶生活、罪恶活动的这种品味降低了，你就知道你的罪恶业报在消退了。And you feel very bad. You feel very sorry that you did so many sinful things. 而且你会，你如果感觉到你。做这些罪恶，做了很多的罪恶，你对你做的这些罪恶感觉到非常的抱歉，非常的遗憾，非常的忏悔的话，这也是一种体现。And you never want to go near any of these activities again. 你再也不想去从事这些罪恶活动了。That's how you know. Okay. Okay. Next question from S E Sawyer. Um, as Dimbai Guru 翻译和所有奉行者，请问社会四阶层能晋升灵性四阶段吗 ？Vaisha, Chaturya, Vaisha, Sutra 也能晋升吗？嗯、um, ，Obeisance to Guru. Um,、uh, um, can I ask the Varna can? Can li li liberate to the wash, ashram. Huh? Can the varna, uh, improve to the ashram? For example, like the chaturya, vaisha, shudra can also, uh, improve to other ashram. Shudra can go to a vaisha. Shudra can become a vaisha. Yes, I think. I think uh, this this devotee want to ask whether the chaturya, vaisha, or shudra can be improved. Yes. Yes. Uh, is the, By cultivating the proper qualities and doing the proper work. 通过从事恰当的活动以及恰当的工作，培养培养好恰当的品质。These positions in society are not eternal. It depends on our qualities and how we work. So it said anybody can become a Brahmana. But they have to be trained and initiated and trained by a qualified spiritual master. 他们，但是他们必须得受到训练，以及被一个有资格的灵性导师得到他们的启迪才行。So they have to be willing to accept the training. 而且他们也得有意愿，想接受训练。Most people are not willing to undergo the training. 大多数人没有这个欲，没有这个想法，想被别人训练。If we tell them you have to sleep on the floor, you have to wake up. 3:30 in the morning. They say, "Oh no, no, I don't want that." 如果我们告诉他们，你得睡在地板上，你得天天三点半就起床。他说，不，不，不，我不想这样。But anybody can do it if they're if they're willing. 但是每一个人都可以这么做，如果他有愿望的话。Yeah. Next question from Vaishnava Vaishnavivani, Madhuri. My humble obeisance. Arjun Mila went back to the Godhead in one lifetime, but Brihad uh Brihad Maharaj have Bharat uh Bharat Maharaj have to change two bodies before going back to the Godhead. Bharat Maharaj didn't do any simple activities like Arjun Mila, but attached to a deal. It is such a wonder to hear these stories. Do you do you any comments on why Bharat Maharaj took more times than Ajamila? Well, uh, uh, well, I I I translate. Uh, 请接受我被问的礼拜。阿加米勒去到回归守神只用了一辈子的时间，但是巴尔特马哈拉吉通过换了两个躯体回归守神，因为他。呃，而且他巴尔特马哈拉吉没有做很多的罪恶，没根本就没有做任何的罪恶活动，他是他也没有像阿加米勒那样做很多的罪恶活动，但仅仅只是一呼一头路而已，这是一个非常好的例子
，请问您有没有很好的评论关于为什么巴尔塔·马哈拉吉花了更多的时间比阿加米勒回归首相？阿里克什。Well, remember, Ajamila, in order to take birth as a Brahmana, he must have done a lot of pious activities in previous life. We must also remember that Ajamila was born in a Brahmin family. This shows that he has done many pious activities in his past life. You don't get a good birth just by chance. We cannot get a good birth just by chance. So Ajamila got a good birth because of something he'd done in the previous lives. Ajamila 得到一个很好的出身，因为他在先前，一定是在先前的活动。So he was born in a pious Brahmana family, and he was brought up to worship Shalagram Shila. 他出生在一个虔诚的婆罗门家庭之中，而且他从小就崇拜沙那格拉姆希腊。And he was taught to respect the Vedic culture. 而且他也被教育学习伟达文化。Just he became he became degraded. 但是最后他堕落了。By the association, he fell down. 通过一个不好的联谊，他堕落。But in the same life, he managed to pull himself up. 但是在他这同样在他这一生之中，他又回，他又他又提升了。So Bharat Maharaj, he he also fell down. He had and he had to take birth again. Bharat Maharaj 也是堕落的，所以他再一次投生。Bharat Maharaj, remember, he was born a great king. He was born in a royal family as a great king. 我们知道 Bharat Maharaj 是出生在一个皇室的家族，他投生为一个国王。But he was able to renounce everything to give it all up. To go to the mountains. 但是他放弃了所有他一切，所有的这一切，去到山里面去。But he he also fell down. 但他也堕落。So he had to take birth again. Next birth, he took birth in a Brahmin family. 而且他在下一生就投身在一个。After after the body of the deer, next birth he took birth in a Brahmana family. 在这个小鹿的生命结束之后，就是他投生为一头鹿之后，然后再一次投生在一个婆罗门的家庭之中。So he was very careful not to get entangled in Maya, not to get too much attached to the family. 因此他非常的小心，不那么的。不那不那么的在意自己的家庭，非常小心。So I don't see a big difference between Ajamila and Bharat Maharaj. They both they both got successful in the end. 我并没有看到其中有太大的不同，他们都在最后获得了成功。OK. OK. Next question from uh, Dimbai Guru. 既然灵魂在灵性世界是完美之主的，为什么还有其他欲望，以致堕落到物质物质世界 ？Obeisance to Guru. Um, if the soul in the spiritual world is uh perfect and satisfaction, why they have the desire and the fall down to the material? Because the soul is a marginal potency. Because because this soul is a marginal potency. Because this soul is a We are very small particles of the supreme. 而且它是至尊非常微小的一部分。Right. So because we're very, like a spark from the fire, can easily be extinguished. 就像这就像这个火花的火星火苗一丁点一样，这是很微不足道的去辨别的。The spark comes out the fire. If it falls on dry grass. 
then it's all right. But if it falls in the water, it will be extinguished. Mm. So, the living entity has that propensity that he is marginal potency. That he can easily fall down. He has to be very careful, he has to hold on to Krishna. See, we are part we are part of Krishna. So if we are connected to Krishna, then we're safe. But as soon as we are disconnected from Krishna, that's when the problems come. Just like our arms and legs, when they're connected to the body, they're part of the body, they're the body, they're very useful. But if they're disconnected from the body, then they're just useless things. Okay. Okay. Uh, this, 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 People ask again, The Vana Ashram, they uh, improve step by step, or they can jump. For example, the Brahmachari and the, the Brahmachari and the Grihastha, can go to the sannyasi directly? Yes, brahmachari and, san and grihastas, they can go directly to sannyas. Next question? Here? Yeah. 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 就是阿加米勒获得这个威士努都塔得到他们的帮助之后然后他的生命得到了延长然后在痛改前非成为一名纯粹的奉献者但是普通人只是在生命的最后阶段唱诵了生命并没有来得及改正自己的错误这样的情
Good day. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, 我还有一个问题，就是一个人若一直是做奉献服务，但是临死的时候还有躯体化的概念，能否回归守神呢？嗯， uh, I want to ask you a question. Uh, one people, one de devotee, always do his devotional service, but when he leaves the body, he still have some uh bodily conception whether he can go back to the Godhead. Well, it depends about what kind of bodily conception he has. If he still has, if he still has some material desires, he's going to take birth in a situation where he can fulfill these material desires. He may take birth in a family of devotees. His last birth in the family of devotees. If he just uh, very uh, frightened, very what? Very fear, have a lot of fear. Fear. Yeah. Well, at the time of death, everybody is fearful. That's natural. Prabhupada said that. Yeah. Okay. Next question from Hani Wamsa. Ask, we also want to do devotional service and, uh, and uh, in this lifetime to go back to Godhead. How should we do? Well, you have to just simply chant Hare Krishna and do service for Krishna. Hare Krishna, wait Krishna to right. You don't have to change anything. You just stay in your whatever position you're in and hear about Krishna in the association of devotees. You don't have to change anything. You don't have to change your situation. But you just have to stay in that position and hear about Krishna. And in this way, then your, your life is perfect. I want to ask a guru, uh, uh, Bharata Maharaj and Kuru Maharaj are all the Pandava's ancestors, which is first, which is the last. Which is, uh, all, uh, are they all Pandava what? Uh, uh, all, uh, Pandava's ancestors. Ancestors. Yeah. No, no Bharat Maharaj is long before Pandavas. Bharat Maharaj is Yeah, he's Bharat Maharaj is first, then the Pandavas. How about Kuru Maharaj? Who? Kuru. Oh. He said Kuru. Kuru. Oh, descendant, yeah. descendant of Kuru. Well, Kuru is also a long time ago, before the Pandavas. Kuru is also in Pandavas. Kuru and Bharata, which is the first? I don't know about that, which one comes first. Kuru. Mm. I wouldn't know. I'd have to... Mm. I'll think about it. Okay. Mm. This I'll 
，再想一想。还有问题 ？OK， 不，没有了，不了。OK。嗯，我们今天到这儿啊，我们今天将感谢苏布里来普布给我们翻译，我们感谢奉献者聆听提问，我们祝福你们长寿快乐，注意身体，保护安全，保护健康，多念诵，十六八八七，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过来，过